Happy New Year! 2024 is here, you guys. I am starting my new year off with a brand new set of watercolors that was gifted to me by Paul Rubens. They saw my Miliang watercolor review video and they approached me and wanted to know if I wanted to test these out. And that's what we're gonna do today. I figured let's just see what these are all about. Maybe you got some Christmas cash and want to spend it on some new watercolors. And so we're gonna open these up together and then we're gonna swatch it and see what this is all about. This watercolor set is called Chomei and I asked for the pronunciation of it so the lady told me it's Cho as in chocolate and May as in May, the month of May. So Cho May watercolors, Chinese watercolors. Paul Rubens will make more people like Chinese colors. 24 colors you get, 12 milliliters in each um, tube. And then back here you have all the colors. There is the um, English version is up here too, plus the number and the light fastness. So we're gonna open it up and see what is inside of here. And then we can swatch it. I like the texture of this box. It's very nice. All right, so we have brand introduction. This is a student grade set. It says vibrant colors, pure colors, natu natural smudging, strong spreading, high transparency, non-graying. Okay. And then again, you have the light fastness over here. Anything on the back? Transparent watercolor pigments, color materials are all used pure color powder, excellent light resistance. High saturation of color, good transparency, good staining and diffusion effect. Natural and even color mixing, stable and delicate, smoother creation. High quality aluminum tubular seal, more carefree use, exquisite design, more attentive details. That's what it says. Okay. So, it comes with these tubes. Let's see if we have them all. They got jangled up a little bit. Okay. I just looked it up on Amazon and it is available for $36. So $35.99 and if you have Prime, you can get it with uh, two-day shipping. So $35.99 American dollars. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know exactly how much it is in um, other currencies, but if you go to Amazon, just check how much it is in your currency. Let's see. It has a really high rating, four and a half out of five stars. So I'm gonna clean up over here and get my desk ready for some swatching and then we can uh, check out how they behave. Let's get started. I made a swatch card because the box does not come with one and I made it the size of the lid so I can glue it in here. I like having a swatch card 
so you can you know open it up and you can look at the colors and you have it right there so just be aware that it does not come with a swatch card i used the arches watercolor paper because it's pure cotton paper it will hopefully give us a better result if you don't care about the swatching process and you want to skip forward the timestamp for that i'm going to put right here so we're starting with the least exciting color which is white Actually, let me put a black stripe. I gave it a little bit of time to dry. It's a permanent marker, so hopefully we don't smudge it as we go. I don't like starting out with the white because it's not very exciting. I don't find myself using the white very often, but it's there if you need it. Next up is Lemon Yellow Hue. And we're gonna just pile it on on top because it's such a nice big area. And then I'm gonna take some more water to it and thin it out so we can have a little bit of a understanding of how they dissolve. Following the lemon yellow hue, we have cadmium yellow pale hue. Next up, cadmium yellow hue. They look very similar, but you know, with three different yellows, that's to be expected, I suppose. So the next one up is Gamboge Hue. I had some of the yellow in my brush still, that's, that's what that is. So I'm gonna try and take this off should probably dip it in the clean water too. Oh no, look. Wow. I thought it was from one of these colors, residue, but wow. Okay, that's pretty. Not what I expected. Oh, that's a pleasant surprise. <gasps> Why do I like these yellows all of a sudden. This reminds me of the Daniel Smith Queen Gold. Next is Cadmium Red Pale Hue. I'm going to scoop this up and place it up top. Whoa! I'm excited to find out how they perform with my usual, you know, water overload. Okay, and then we have cadmium red hue. So this is pale hue and this is red hue. Whoa, this red is beautiful. Cadmium red deep hue we are on. Whoa, that is a lipstick red. Next up is permanent rose. Oh, this is pretty. <gasps> Yay. 
Wow. I love when colors surprise me like this. Next up, we have alizarin crimson hue. I'm not a red person, but these reds are beautiful. All right, that's that, beautiful. Dare I say, which one of those reds is my favorite so far? Uh, I didn't do a good job of, of um, thinning these ones out because it would be kind of nice to see um, if they, what they look like thinned out. There was a lot of pigment in this one. But it's kind of nice to to check and see if they how they lift, huh? And mind you, this is cotton paper, so the cotton paper I feel like tends to soak up the colors a lot more. This one is pretty dry. I'm not sure if this one will lift. Next, Purple Lake. Next up, we're getting into the blues. This one is the Cerulean. Cobalt blue hue. Then we have ultramarine. Intense blue. Don't know what that compares to. Never heard of intense blue before. Is that like a thalo blue? Looks like a thalo blue. So far, these colors are super vibrant. Indigo. Don't worry, it's not black. It's almost black. <laughs> Very nice um, gray blue. I feel like it's missing a shade between those blues. But I almost feel like there should be something in between these three. It's just a personal feeling. This one is almost like a um, Payne's Gray, right? To me, like indigo has more of a purple in it. This looks more like Payne's Gray. Okie dokie. Now we're getting into the greens. Sap green is a nice color. Very nice. Next on the list is Hooker's Green Light. Whoa, that came out very fast. Also a color I can appreciate. Then we have emerald. On the palette, it looks a lot like a, like a turquoise. 
It's definitely a lot of blue in this emerald. It's nice. Then the browns. So right now we have burnt sienna. Raw umber, wow, that raw umber looks very uh, green. That's not usually what I have experienced. Am I wrong? Van Dyke Brown coming up. I never use Van Dyke Brown, like ever. Nope. Maybe I should, maybe I should challenge myself. But then, you know, like I said in my last video, I just want to work with pretty colors. Van Dyke Brown is not a pretty color in my eyes. Could be, if, you know, if you're into browns, then Van Dyke Brown is probably a wonderful color for you. But yeah, I just don't ever use it. Now, you know, if I were a, a watercolorist that does landscapes and, you know, florals and still lives and things like that, I would probably love this color. But for what I do, I, I just don't ever, I can't get myself to use these colors for what I do. But they are here if you are interested in the set. Last but not least, ivory black. No surprise. This is a very nice, very nice black. All right, there you have it. All 24 colors. The top ones are already almost dry. I laid the colors on pretty heavily on the top here, so that's gonna take a while to dry. Uh, but I will come back once they are fully dried and just show you what they look like. Some of them have been quite a surprise. Let me zoom you out. They have surprised me. In fact, looking at the Van Dyke Brown, I, I do like this Van Dyke Brown. I don't like the raw umber. I think the raw umber to me has, it looks too, too white. Like there's a, a whiteness to it. Yeah. Overall, like first impression, I like them. I think it's a great beginner set. The color choices are not overwhelming to me. You have your, your basic colors that you can use and mix and, you know, try out without feeling like, oh, there's too many blues, too many green blues, too many, too many of everything. So with the Miliang set, I felt a little overwhelmed and I felt like there were colors in there that overlapped or were very similar that I could have done without. And even after I've used them a lot for my YouTube shorts this past December, like a lot. And I tended to gravitate to similar colors. So I like a smaller variety of colors 
it is not as overwhelming to me. Some of these colors, as they're drying, they turn out very, very pretty. I'm gonna let these dry and then I will show you uh, once they're completely dry, how they dried, and then we can start on the project. I will be back shortly. Now our colors are dry. And this is what they look like in its dry state. Sometimes they look a little bit more shiny than other times. And that, I think, is just because I really laid on the color quite thick in those areas. So don't pay attention to that. So now that we have all of these colors, which one should we choose for our project? I want to pick colors that will mix nicely, obviously, because we don't want a muddy mess. I kind of want to do blue and greens, just because those are my favorite colors. Before I forget, I wanted to mention that this set does not come with a purple. And I don't know if they meant to put the purple in that was supposed to be the indigo but what they have labeled indigo is actually a paints gray when i was swatching the colors i was confused because to me indigo has a lot more purple hue than what they give us so i don't know if this was an oversight on their part, if they just labeled the paints gray wrong, or if they meant to put in an indigo, I don't know. But I'm kind of sad to see that they did not include a purple, especially since the Miliang watercolors, which belongs to Paul Rubens, has three beautiful purples in this little travel set that I reviewed last year. So yeah, um, I mean, that's not to say you can't mix your own purple, but it would have been nice if they had included a purple and maybe taken out a yellow, for example. But that's just me. In case you were wondering, I actually used a projector to write these numbers on my paper. I cannot write this beautifully on my own. I need a little bit of help. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with those numbers, so I filled them in with some masking fluid and I used my ruling pen, which worked beautifully. I highly recommend using something like this instead of a brush when you're um, applying masking fluid because you can be much more precise. And I know the first part of my video kind of ended abruptly with me trying to decide which colors um, I should choose for it. And off camera I was trying to combine a few different colors to see what I would like best, but ultimately I decided on the ultramarine blue and the sap green, just because I was worried that the other greens would make this piece too dark in the end. I was curious to see how these colors would react when I add lots of water to it and that is usually how I have been creating my pieces and I tend to overdo it with the water most days and some colors wash out and dry too light for my taste but I'm pleased to say that for the few things that I've painted with these colors, that was not the case. So they stood up to my intense amount of water and, and dried very nicely. I used 
B paper for this project which is also a hundred percent cotton that's what I have been using lately and I really like it I could have used the arches watercolor paper that I used for the swatching but I had already prepped this paper with the numbers ahead of time so that's what I ended up choosing but yeah the paper was really wet and to the point where I thought it would tear that's how much it soaked up the water so there was quite a bit of water on it and you see me uh, mopping certain spots up and uh, reapplying paint and that too worked really well so shout out to this paper by the way it can take a lot of water and it does not disintegrate underneath your your brush so in case you were wondering it stands up to a lot of water all of the colors included in this set are super vibrant and very pretty and I wish I was able to use them all but I I'm going to use these colors in the future so and when that happens if you've been on my channel um, you know that I list everything in the description box below the videos so that you know what I've used even if I don't mention it in my videos so I am really excited to keep using these um, colors in the future and um, yeah, I, I kind of wanted to play with more colors, but I'm always worried that I overdo it. For now, I chose these two colors and I, I'm glad I did because there was already a lot going on in this video with the swatching. It took me so long to figure out what to put on this background and I think putting down those bold numbers kind of threw me off. If I'm honest, I made a second one of these and I decorated it with my usual doodles and somehow it just felt off and I didn't want to do that on my actual piece. I actually took a photo of the background and imported it into my iPad and worked on it in my Procreate because I just couldn't figure out what to put on. I mean, I was really stumped and I tried my doodles and I it just nothing looked right. So finally, I ended up putting these ginkgo leaves on the background and at first I thought maybe I would use the uh, black pens because somehow I wanted the numbers in gold but then I don't know what came over me and I grabbed my gold pen and I drew them in gold and I'm really glad I did it's different from what I usually do it only dawned on me after the fact that the ginkgo plant is native to China. So I don't know, maybe subconsciously I was channeling that. Who knows? I was debating on whether I should include some of my doodles, but then I decided against it and instead outlined those gold lines or lined the gold lines on one side with my black fine liner pen and I really like that effect it kind of looks like there is light coming from one side casting a shadow on the other side and once I took the masking tape off the numbers by the way that was so satisfying to do <laughs> I highly recommend it <laughs> Um, but yeah, once that got cleared up, sometimes I have a hard time seeing the result if it is obstructed with 
painter's tape or in this instance um, the masking tape once I took the masking tape off I could see see a little bit more clearly on how I wanted to proceed and so instead of filling in the numbers that I had previously thought I would do I lined the numbers with my black pen which helped conceal the edges of the numbers in case that ruling pen didn't do a good job or I messed up. So you can just kind of conceal that a little bit. I then added shadows on the same side that I used the black pen on the leaves by adding a black line with a watercolor pencil that I have to tie everything together and I think it worked really well. I am really pleased with how it ended up looking. All in all, I am very happy with the set and how these colors perform. Please bear in mind I only do this for fun. I am not a professional watercolorist and like I said these are student grade and for what I use them they work perfectly and I look forward very much to using them again in future videos. I hope you found this review helpful and I uh, wanted to say thank you to Paul Rubens Art for gifting me the set. Thank you very much. I enjoyed working with them and I look forward to working with these colors in the future. As I am wrapping up this video, I wanted to say a quick thank you for tuning in. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you found it informative. I try to give uh, an unbiased opinion. I really enjoy trying out new things and I always, always, always give you my opinion. And so uh, I hope that was helpful. I am leaving a link for the US Amazon uh, website down below in the description box for you if you are interested in checking it out and let me know if you buy them and when you try them out how you like them. I um, certainly um, had a lot of fun playing around with it and I look forward to using all of those colors in the near future and when I do use them, I will most certainly let you guys know. And uh, as always, everything is always in the description box down below. If you are curious on uh, what I have been using in my videos. I hope you have a wonderful weekend or whenever you watch this video. And uh, I will see you next Friday.